a few of you were asking how I'm doing these portraits, like what's the technique or the method, what's the brushes. So I figured I'd do kind of a quick tutorial here. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on the line art or, you know, throwing in like the shading right now. It's just kind of a quick thing and then I'm going to attempt to record the screen and um, explain how I do the shading. Alrighty, so I am going to attempt to record the screen as I smudge out all my detailing here and kind of clean it up. Um, no script, just doing this on the fly, so <laughs> I apologize if it's kind of uh, weird. Um, so what I have been doing for a lot of the recent artwork that I've been posting, I am actually smudging the the um, crayon. So I use the uh, 6B pencil sketching. So I guess it's not a crayon, it's a, a pencil. So I use that to sketch out the drawing. And then for smudging, I am using a medium hard airbrush. So if we, and I only have one layer. So if we zoom in and I start smudging, that's how it's gonna look. Usually I'll just kind of select an area and kind of smudge it all in. Um, I just I like that it already kind of gives a nice amount of um, different like colors and in, uh, textures and everything so it's not so flat. And then you just as you're doing it kind of think of how the, the fur would flow in that area. Um, and I want to have kind of like an outer part to the ear so I'm using the eraser with the same brush, the medium hard airbrush. And I'm actually going to erase the areas that I want to have it lighter. And what's that that is going to do is after I'm done, if I go and make a new layer and stick it under the artwork, say I'm gonna make his ear green, I can scribble on in some green and it's only gonna show up where I've erased. And it's smudged up here, so it's not 100% black, but that's how that's gonna work. Um, so you're actually erasing away some of the, the detailing or the, um, the color so that you can have the color underneath show. And um, as I'm doing this, as I'm like shading and, and trying to clear out the detail and, and add in the fur and all that, I'm also gonna have medium hard airbrush for my paintbrush and I'm gonna have it on black. So like the inner part of this ear, I'm probably gonna have it actually be pretty black. So I'm gonna go in and just paint in some black and then smudge it out. Again, you know, you want to kind of think of what kind of textures you're going to have in there. This is kind of a, you know, little fur and I love to have floppy ears with lots of little fur behind the ear and in the ear. I think probably because it goes, it reminds me of the dog I had growing up. Uh, we had a Sheltie and she always had really fluffy folded ears. It just was so cute. And if you've ever seen my character, or my artwork, I always draw her with those little fluffy um, pieces so I'm just kind of going around smoothing everything out um, just want to try to make sure there's no like grainy bits left from the pencil and another thing too I like to try to eliminate as many line art parts as I can uh, some styles that I do do call for some line art but most of the time I try to actually use shading and instead of relying on line art I just think it makes a um, a stronger piece. So there's the ear. I'm gonna kind of clean that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna actually go through and just put a little bit of detail in there. And then when you kind of go back in and smudge it, it, you know, you blend it in a little bit and it just, it looks a little bit better. I'm gonna do the same thing in here because I want these bits to kind of stick out. And remember, I'm, I'm erasing away. I'm not actually using white. I'm erasing away the detail. And then that way when I go back through the color will show and then like I want to have these be a little more wispy rather than just clumps of fur so I'm gonna go in and erase bits um, and like one thing I've tried I've been trying to really do lately is I like to kind of show my brush strokes I think it adds like another dimension to the artwork I don't know if I'm doing it right or not but <laughs> it's just kind of my way I guess and that's how I do it so again, you know, I'm going to go through, just kind of smudge everything around, soften everything. Um, I know I'm sure there's easier ways to do this, you know, ways that maybe make more sense, but this is just how I do it. You know, when I'm shading and, and scribbling in the line art, I just kind of space out or 
I don't know, go on a trance or something. Tran in a trance. I can't talk. I, I yeah. Um, and I'm actually going to flip the canvas. If you don't know about that little trick, you should always flip your artwork back and forth as you're working on it. It helps you notice different things that you might not have noticed on the other side. Um, it's like your, your mind kind of registers a picture in a certain way. So when you flip it, it's almost like looking at a new picture and you can kind of see, um, any errors that you had. Um, he is actually going to still have a good line art for like above the eye where, you know, he would probably have eyelashes. I'm not going to give him eyelashes, but, um, I am going to leave that pretty strong in there. And then just make sure we have some good shading going through. And then I'm going to use a really small brush for the eraser and just kind of go in and really, um, you know, scribble in some more detailing like that. And just kind of soften it a little bit. And, you know, eyes are not just a black circle. There is different colors and, you know, lights being reflected in there. And then another way, another thing I like to do too, is it helps the eye kind of pop out. So I kind of go around and I add some of the little highlights around the eye that kind of will help it pop. And let's see, I want this to be darker. So I'm gonna actually put some more black in there, kind of smooth it out some. And then I'm gonna take the eraser and, and add some more detailing in here, smudge it in, and then I think that and I've gotten rid of the line art, but you can still see that there's a separation there. I'm gonna do one little piece at a time and go through. And one thing I've learned doing these videos is I try to kind of do it in sections so that when I go back and edit it, I'm not zooming in and jumping all over the place. I can kind of just zoom in one area, work on that area, and then um, you know move forward. I tend to kind of start in the furthest area. So this just happens to be like the darkest area. He's gonna still have some highlights that will show up over here. So I'm just gonna try to blend in some other deep, you know, other like shades and shapes and everything. And again, you know, the, the goal is to get rid of the line art. So I'm kind of blending it out and remembering how it's gonna look if light is hitting this dog. I'm just trying to capture like a realistic shading. And, and granted, this isn't really a realistic drawing. It's, it's a cartoon dog, obviously, but um, you know, those rules still apply when you're when you're um, doing a cartoony dog. You still kind of want to think of the anatomy and how things are going to reflect on the, the dog's nose. And the nose can be kind of a pain in the butt to draw sometimes. So I know sometimes my noses are kind of funky looking. But you know what? I'm just going to keep pushing through and hopefully in time I'll draw some awesome noses <laughs> just automatically and it won't be so different every time. So again, right now I'm just trying to you know, smudge things out, get it nice and smooth. And then once I'm content kind of where things are looking, I'll go back through it and start scribbling in some detail. And I like to keep this little line up here. I think that kind of helps um, show like the shape of the nose and how it goes up. So I'm gonna leave that there. You figure the fur is going up or down, however way you want to look at it, but you know, you want to have the fur going that way versus going left to right. And then this, the nose, you know, the fur will kind of follow the contour or the, the shape of uh, the snout there. So let's see, he's gonna have a little bit of reflective light over here, probably a little bit in here. He's gonna have some down there. And again, this is using the eraser tool to get in those details. I'm not using white to get those details in. You know, dogs have very spotted noses. If you ever look closely up at their nose, it's not a smooth piece. I don't want to focus too much on getting the detail of a dog nose in there, but I try to get something in there so it's not just a smooth black like teddy bear nose. You know, there is, there is some, um, some texture in there. I turn my canvas a lot. I often don't keep things flat. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but that's just how I do it. Um, you know, you can kind of do whatever works for you. And, you know, they have a little jowls here, so I'm gonna put some shade in there. And then if you think about it too, they do have like a little freckle, or freckle, um, whisker bits. I just kind of wing them, to be honest. I don't put a lot of thought into the whisker parts, so just stick them in, blur them around a little bit. 
See, there's gonna be some little bit of shading right in here. I'd like to have the mouth pop, so I will actually go back in and add just a little bit of white in there. Just really get that mouth to pop. And I feel like this helps too, so you can avoid having line art. Because I, you know, I want it to be, I want shading to show the image, not line art. So that's the, kind of the start right there. So I'm trying to edit this in pieces and you know just try to keep up on that so that hopefully when I'm done with the artwork the video will mostly be done. I don't know if there's a whole lot else to really explain. It's kind of just repeating the same steps over and over again. So I don't know if it would be beneficial for me to, to like finish recording me doing the whole process here. So like these are his little teefies. I try not to be a perfectionist and you know maybe that's a flaw in my artwork but um, as it is you know most of these portraits take me a few hours and I don't want to you know spend my entire day on one piece I want to make sure I'm able to spend my time wisely and work on other pieces so um, like, there's a lot of artists out there like in the like in DeviantArt at least it was years ago I don't know if it's still like this but a lot of people are, you know, really against the shading tool you know, or stamps or um, using like grash brush, using grash brushes. Um, you know, a lot of people are against it. And it's like, you know, why can't you afford to have a shortcut? Why is it so bad to use shading? And granted, you know, you, you want to know how to shade with, you know, colors and be able to add and layer because like if you're if you're doing like a real painting, you're not gonna really be smudging. You're gonna be layering more and more colors. Um, but you know what? This isn't a painting. This isn't a real painting. This is a digital painting. And we are given tools that we should take advantage of. Um, and I personally really like how these look. I like the softness of them. Um, and I like that the smudge can kind of speed up the process a little bit. Um, and again, not to say it's, you know having layers and everything is not important. You know, you kind of do you do you. You know, do what you like, do what makes sense to you. Don't worry about what other people are doing. You know, do whatever works for you. And like for me, smudging works. <laughs> I don't always do it, but when I'm just trying to do a little portrait like this, with this technique of you know using the eraser to get the other color in and going back through with the. Um, the color at the end. This just is what works for me. I like the smudge tool. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> uh, there's a million ways to do art and art is expressive and you know you can express yourself and your thoughts and everything there, your own style. Um, I mean there are generally some rules that you shouldn't break but Overall, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want with art. And I say rules you show and break. I mean, I guess that'd be more like anatomy type stuff. Like, I mean, if you're drawing a dog, you want it to look like a dog. And of course the phone's going to ring. I gotta be right back. Pausing the video for that phone call wasn't really worth it. It was just a scam call. And I effectively made that guy really mad. Because <laughs> I like to, um, really call scam baiting or whatever. Um, I like to, you know, give them a hard time. So... He didn't really enjoy his phone call. He apparently calling someone buddy is offensive. He just kept going, buddy, buddy. And I just started laughing. He's like, what, does it piss you off? I say, buddy, buddy. Not really, not really. But, you know, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. Um, anyways, I was kind of... I was talking about a dog anatomy and everything like that and like the reason why it would be so important to try to pay respect to anatomy is you want people to know what you're drawing um, and if you don't have the anatomy or you know the the signs or um, traits of the dog are they gonna know it's a dog so get some fur detail in here I know this is probably one thing that a lot of people um, notice when they see me doing it because it's you know the bigger fur bits it's it's funner to funner it's more fun to see so um you figure the fur is gonna kind of go down like that and then you know, it's gonna kind of go around and the bird's starting to get a little talkative so i do apologize if there's anything loud from the bird i most of the time don't even notice it anymore 
Um, so let's see, so this is just kind of a start. I want to kind of smooth it out. Get any grainy bits out of there. There we go. And then I'm going to take the eraser, a little bit bigger than that, and just start to add in some fur bits where I want the fur to show. And again, that is the eraser, not using white ink. Then I'm going to take black, bigger brush, kind of go in. I want to have it darker down here. Smooth it in. Another fun way to do the fur too is once you kind of are feeling good with the majority of the fur you have placed, you can go through and with a smaller one, do like tiny individual hairs that you might see. Oh my, then won't you smudge it out? Nope, not like that. It's too hard. Very lightly and it just, it. I don't know how to describe it. I just I like that it kind of stands out a little bit more than um, just clumps of fur here. So he has his little cheeks here and they're not particularly like long and fluffy. It's just nice roundness. Same kind of what I did with the front. I'm just gonna go in, smudge it up so there's no lines, you know, fur. Kind of goes in all directions and it's wispy and curls sometimes so just have fun with it don't think too much about it well, again you want to kind of you want to follow how the fur is going to go on the neck i don't want it to be too dark in there so i'm going to actually pull some of it back out i'm going to go in with black and put a couple clumps here through remember those little like individual lines I was talking about and just scribble a couple of those in and I think that just it's another dimension to it I guess I don't know I don't know how you would describe it but that's what I do and it's just kind of like layering it on top of each other I'm gonna actually add a bit more black here I want this area to be a little darker His little cheek here so now that I've done all that I'm gonna go back to the cheek and try to uh, define and where the cheek is a little bit more um, so I'm gonna go in and erase some more just so I can really get the top layer of fur in the other ear so again just kind of smoothing it in cleaning it up Getting rid of the texture of the um, pencil that I used to sketch this. Just want to blend it all in so it's nice and smooth. And this way it's also not just white, there's a little bit of shading and color in there. no order to this I just I start and I just go through it I don't like I, do, I don't start with the eyes every time and then the ear and then the nose I just I pick a spot whatever kind of calls to me and I make my way through so um, if you are drawing along or using this as a tutorial um, don't feel as though you have to follow this exact um, pattern you know starting with the ear and then working in a circular way around um, you know just kind of do whatever works for you take it or leave it you know i you did not go to school to be an art teacher i am not a teacher of you know any nature i guess um i don't claim to you know, be the best person out there uh, at drawing or digital art or anything like that i just just kind of trying to show what i do and um, what works for me so If you have a little bit of line art, an easier way to kind of break that up is just to smudge it a little bit. And then it kind of makes it look like it's furry versus just a flat line. 
Um, I'm gonna actually bring the ear down a little bit. That's another nice thing too about having it the smudge is if you're working on it and you're thinking, oh, the ear's not low enough, you can easily go in there and just kind of make it lower. And then last but not least is his eye. So I'm just gonna go through, smudge out these lines. Dogs have, I don't even know what you call them, the little black bits in the corner of their eye. I'm actually not really going to include that. They'll just be kind of shaded in there. So like I said, it's just kind of the same thing throughout the whole picture. I do want him to have an eyelid, so I'm going to kind of bring that eyelid back, and then I'm going to take the eraser, a smaller size, and just put a little line here so it separates that eyelid from his um, eyelashes, I guess if you want to call it, his eyelashes. Um, and then a little bit more black in the eye. Just kind of smooth it in. Um, that's one thing that sucks about the touch screen is when I turn the camera or the canvas, sometimes I end up smudging things. So I'm sure you've noticed that just in my other videos. There's a lot of <laughs> random smudges on the side. Um, and then you know, we have the eyes kind of curved too. I just want to get some shading in there. Let's see, I don't know about this. This one's not quite feeling right. I might need to play with it a little bit. I want to kind of soften that line. Make that smaller. And that's the other thing too, you know, don't be afraid to go back over things and redo them. Um, you know, sometimes I feel a little awkward or uncomfortable showing my creative process with some of my videos because you'll see like I might have started with the mouth open and then the mouth changes throughout the video and I think it's it's still important to kind of see the process for that because it just shows that it's okay for you to change your mind while you're working on the piece. It's okay to go back and revise things. Um, you know, it's it's not permanent ink, you know, if you want to go through and um, change how it looks, you can. You know, that's totally fine. I'm actually going to make this brighter. And that's with the eraser tool. Probably getting tired of me saying that, but I just really want to emphasize that this is just black and erasing. Let's see, how's that look? Um, my favorite part is usually the reflective light that kind of puts the life in the picture. So let's see, we have the light over here. I'm going to try right here. And then, you know, the eye is curved, so there'd be a little bit of a curved here. And I'm gonna put one right here too. And then maybe one right here. So, might not make a ton of sense, but it's kind of cool looking, so I'm going with it. <laughs> um, so there is the piece. Um, I might kind of go back through and clean up some of my messy strokes. My son yelling in the background. Hopefully that's not too visible in the video. Flip it. Still looks okay. So let's see, this eye is a little bit bigger than that eye, I think. So maybe what I'll do... I'm gonna actually move this eye up just a little bit here maybe and then since you know, I moved it up we have those lines we're just gonna go back through smudge them out so they're not super noticeable and that's the other thing too you know if if you need to fix something fix it don't don't be scared to fix things it's fine um, flip it again and there is that picture I figured it might not be a bad idea to show the rest of the process you know, I showed you how I do the shading and everything so I have another layer and um, if you didn't know, the whole picture was done on, done on one layer. 
So now I have a second layer where I'm going to add the color. I'm going to make him kind of like a chocolatey brown. And I'm actually going to use the lasso tool. I'm going to go all the way around like that. I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know if it will record the dotted line, but just kind of going around. I want to select the majority of the dog so that when I fill in the color, most of it is going to be colored there and then fill it in. And I'm going to add another layer, put that behind the dog. I'm going to make it kind of like a grayish color. Then if I go back to the dog's layer or the, the color layer, I'm going to use the smudge tool and just kind of make sure I don't have any harsh lines on this layer and make sure all the detail has some color. Um, so this is just like my base color, uh, my base layer of color, whatever you want to call it. So there's his tufts over in the ear. It tends to go faster once you get to this stage because you've already done the majority of the shading. So now it's just a matter of adding color. And then I do a couple things at the end too that I feel will help, um, will pull it together really nicely. Um, and I'll show you guys how I do that too. Alright, so there's most of the color. And if we hide the layer that has all the shading, you can kind of look over and just make sure there's no any harsh edges. Sometimes these will actually show up in the final piece, so it's just kind of a nitpick of mine. I like to make sure you can't see any of those marks. So go through, make sure everything's nice and softened. And then if we turn that layer back on, it's not too messy. Um, and then I'm going to actually lock it for an iPad for the iPad Pro on the Procreate. It's Alpha Lock. Um, if you're using a different program, it might just be like lock transparency. And then I'm going to make this a mask, um, clipping mask. So when I draw on here, the color is not going to go past the area that I've done on that one layer. So I'm going to give him a little stripe on his nose. a white ear maybe let's see how that looks nah I don't want to do that um, I'm gonna do another layer uh, clipping and we're gonna take like a darker brown let's see how that looks darker brown maybe I'll try almost closer to black Have it go down his back too and you know what maybe we'll have it kind of curl under his chin and I'll turn it into some stripes maybe he is gonna have some spots up here if you're coming into this not from Wahas and this is a totally new um, like art for you or artist um, if you like to design dogs like this we have a custom demo over on Wahas where you can design a character and we have so many markings any unlimited colors it's a ton of stuff so you should definitely check it out at wajas.com let's see here maybe we'll put a little bit of this down here too and then I'm actually gonna kind of do the same thing I did with the layout or the um, the base I'm just gonna go through and kind of smudge these out so I want to make sure that Everything is nice and soft. I don't like to have sharp markings on them usually. And this got cut off, so we're gonna pull that back a little bit. Then he needs to have a mouth, so we're gonna do that. Mouth, we want to have it kind of like a darkish salmon almost color maybe. Again, I'm going to go through and just try to make sure I don't have too much bleeding of color. Just make sure it's nice and smooth. Then we're going to do a layer for the nose. I don't like to go with pure black because I like to be able to use the actual black uh, for shading. So I might actually do like a darker gray color. This right here is actually looking a little too dark. So I'm going to lighten it a bit. 
and then that way you can still kind of get some shading in there which is kind of just a, a pet peeve of mine I guess because I mean I guess if you're gonna have something super black you probably wouldn't really notice um, you know detailing or shading but I, I like to see the shading so I'm gonna stick with the lighter color and I just want to smooth the edge of the nose um, I'm actually going to blend some of this color into the snout um, like that and then I'm going to take some lighter gray and actually paint it in here a little bit. I'm gonna put some white. I'm gonna do like an off-white color for his eyes. And we'll give him some nice orange eye color. And one thing that I do that's probably a little bit backwards because I just did all that shading, but it just, it's what I'm doing right now and I'm sure someday I'll change it. But once I've done all that, I'm actually going to put everything in a folder. Combine all the way down and it should remember the layer. Yep, it did. It remembered how I had everything layered. I'm gonna duplicate this, hide that layer, and I'm gonna flatten it. That way it's all one layer. I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm actually going to set it to multiply and drop the opacity down just a little bit. And I'm going to pick a bluish color. We'll see how that looks. Um, again, I want to show where um, the shading is. So I'm gonna try doing that. I need to have that uh, as a mask. So we'll set that as a mask, go through. I'm gonna kind of redo some of the shading. Um, Blue might not have been the right color, but I'm going to continue forward for now. It's not a big deal because there's a nifty trick we can do afterwards to pick a different color that might fit it better. There's the shading, or you know it just adds a little bit of color so it's not just black. I'm gonna actually go up to hue, saturation, and just play with this and see if there's a color that looks better. Um, red kind of fun looking. Um, so you can really kind of play around with it and just find something that appeals to you. Um, I kind of like red, oh no, that's kind of nice, but if we drop the opacity just a little bit more then I'm going to add another gonna add another layer clip mask and this one I'm going to set to screen and then with this one I'm actually going to pick the colors the base colors here And then the fun part are those eyes. So I'm gonna hop back over to the shaded layer. I'm gonna pick orange again. I'm gonna get some of that um, multiplied orange color right in there. Maybe try even through the eye itself. I'm gonna do the same for the highlights. Reintroduce the white for those highlights. A little bit of yellow and or like a gold color in the eye, just to kind of make it look like it's a. Oh, it would have helped if I actually picked the color. Hold on, clear. Just a little bit of gold in there. See how that looks. Just makes them a little more vibrant. There's his eyes. Um, one thing that I've been really enjoy doing. Um, I'm gonna merge all this down so it's just one happy layer. And I'm gonna duplicate it just to save a backup in case I really mess it up. Um, and then I'm gonna go through, do some more smudging, 
Just make sure that the colors are where they need to be. Um, oops. Another thing that you can do too, if you want to, is you can even draw on top to add a little bit more for detail. Um, I was trying to explain earlier how I like to have um, some of those added fur details. So like, say you're doing the white up here, maybe you wanna have some stray hairs. I don't know if I have the right tool. You wanna have some like stray hairs like that. You can kind of just scribble it in and then soften it a little bit. Like maybe you feel like you have an area that's still kind of dark and you wanna have a little bit more um, layers or dimensions there, you can kind of add. This is probably gonna be my longest video ever. I think I'm already at like over half an hour. Let's see how many people actually go through and watch all of it. <laughs> um, and I don't wanna, like I said, I don't like to spend a ton of time on little details, but um, I think I'm gonna move on from here. I did initially record me drawing in the background, but it was just going to make the video way too long. If you like this video, let me know and I can attempt to do a tutorial video on backgrounds. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this, please consider commenting, liking, and subscribing. All that stuff that kind of helps build the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.